Hello everybody, my name is Gavin, and today I'm going to show you how I farm CP and EXP in Zeta Blade Chronicles 3. Now this method that I'm going to be using is mostly a post-game method. You could do it before post-game in theory, but the main reason why I'm doing this in post-game is because you can level down your characters. Now, that might seem counterintuitive, but the lower level you are, the more EXP and CP you will get when you kill someone that's higher level than you, which we're going to be doing in this video. So to do this, you're going to want to play as Noah as any attacker class. It really doesn't matter what attacker. I recommend things that have position rolls because you'll get your talent gauge filled up quicker that way. And we're going to want to basically instantly fill up our talent gauge at the start of the fight and then basically end it after that. So to do that, we're going to want any positional. We're also going to want capable hand. This is really important. As a matter of fact, if you can't get that for Noah, just playing as a flash fencer will have it just innately, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to unlock it for yourself, and you want to get flash fencer past the rank 10 mark, so you could level it up more, all you have to do is go to... Let's see here. It is Colony Omega. You'll find Kamurabi there, do his quest line, unlock his class, then from there, rank his class up to level 10 on any character, come back here, and then that'll unlock the cap for Kamurabi's class and Flash Spencer for Ethel. So, from there, you can level up Flash Spencer more past level 10, and that is where you'll get the ability capable hands at level 15. But if you don't have that, or you don't want to do that, you can just make Noah as a Flash Fencer, and it'll work as well. And if you do make Noah a Flash Fencer in particular, uh, just to point this out, you're going to want to use Null Slash, because that's the positional for a Flash Fencer. Besides that, though, uh, let me swap back to the class I was before, because I want to level this one up. Besides that, you're going to want a Limited Sword, because this is really important for this method, because without a limited sword, we cannot do this. So, I mentioned that I want Noah as an attacker. The main reason why is because I'm not 100% sure if this will work if Noah is a healer or a tank. I will update the description of this video if it's found out that is to be the case. But from my testing, it seems like what I want to happen is only going to happen if Noah is an attack. Which sucks, but it is what it is. And you can just basically have all your other characters as whatever classes you want to level up. As a matter of fact, I'm going to swap Serena to Full Metal Jaguar so you can kind of see what it's going to be like. Your hero also doesn't matter because honestly you could just de-equip the hero and just go without him. But if you want to level up the hero, you can do that as well. I just don't care to. So we're in Origin right now, which is the final area of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Um, we're going to want to go to this Defense Tower 1. So once you get there, there's going to be some Elites around here, and that's where we're going to want to go after, because Elites give you even more of an EXP and CP bonus when you kill them. So you want to go up to the Elite, you want to use your Positional Art first. After that, use the Limited Sword immediately, and from there, you're going to want to use Tycon Slash, which is your B move when you're in Limited Sword mode. So what's going on here is that when you have a Lucky 7 drawn as an attacker, it gains some attribute where every attack the Lucky 7 lands has instant death attached to it. Now, this instant death isn't guaranteed, it's just a percent chance. And by using that skill, it's a multi-hit, so every time that attack lands, every hit in that multi-hit move has a chance of instantly killing the enemy. So that'll have your highest chances of getting instant death on the enemy and then just killing it from there. And as you can see, we get a lot of CP and EXP when we kill it. That's basically what I do. Now, when you kill these things and you can't get them to respawn, just leave Origin, go to any map that's not in Origin, quick travel there, and then quick travel back to this defense tower. And then the elites should just respawn. And then just keep doing that. As you can see, these things don't take a lot to kill. And they give out a lot of EXP and CP when you kill them. So I hope this method was helpful. And if it helped you out, that's cool. Alright, bye.